This broadcast is inappropriate for all ages right here on Hashtag We Are Movie Club. I am Camera. Uh, I've got to <laughs> make the effort not to try to talk down to the microphone. Uh, we are upgrading a little bit today. Uh, not only are we here today to talk about Captain America Civil War, uh, the Marvel Comics Universe, Marvel Cinematic Universe, I think the MCU, that's how we're talking about it. Well, you'll notice I'm not wearing my headphones. I don't need it. I'm not talking to anybody. We'll come back to that when we come back to that. Um, I've disabled that mo that microphone. Oh, I should probably just unplug it all altogether. Um, and I'm going to pull it up in screen and see. I've got a, uh, a new microphone. Snowball. Snowball Ice, I think. Yeah. My neck still hurts, so uh, that was painful. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Um, I don't know where I want it yet. I don't know if I want it in, in camera. I don't know if I want it down here. But today we get to play with that a little bit. Um, I know I want all this gone. But uh, back to the movie. Man, man oh man, I did not expect uh, such a crowd to draw. My, uh, so every week we get together and we talk about movies and stuff. And uh, on Sundays we get together and watch movies and talk about them as it's going. So uh, we, we got on RabbitCast. Uh, my room for my event, and the room filled up. Literally, um, I think there was like three people that wanted to get in and couldn't get in because uh, Rabbit just doesn't allow uh, past X amount of people in the room. I had so many people wanted to come watch the movie, and uh, it was really a good time uh, chatting with folks, comic fans, superhero fans, uh, action movie fans. <sighs> okay. Part of getting this new microphone is that I need to have a new box that the cats are playing in. So that's what's happening off camera, <laughs> just so you're aware. <clears throat> now, um, it was a really good time chatting with all those folks. I only had to boot like one or two people. Um, I think one like dropped a porn pic and the other one started like, adver was advertising. I think it was like for Bitcoin mining or something. Um, so... Uh, it is what it is, um, but to me that just shows that you're successful, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what success is with RabbitCast. It's just a thing that happens. Um, but I'm having some, uh, mostly consistent events, uh, which I consider a good thing. And um, oh, that's good. Let's not pull that wire. Uh, so I think I think we're on a good path with this. I'd like to get some more people in here talking about it live on the podcast. But um, right now it's just me. Uh, we got to talk about a lot of the holes and whatnot that are actually in this. Um, some of the differences between the comic and everything. Um, <clears throat> so for those who are not aware, which is actually surprising at this point, Civil War is a huge uh, comic book event. Uh, occasionally Marvel gets uh, gathers up all their fortitude and Brave's doing, like, a worldwide crossover in the Marvel Universe. Um, the f more famous one back in the day was Infinity War, where everyone in the Marvel Universe was basically involved. Um, and that's the movie that we're, we're going to come up to soon, which doesn't make any sense that these are out of order. It literally doesn't work. Um, honestly, the Civil War... Getting to the point of Civil War depends upon... Uh, a lot of previous events to include Infinity Crisis um, in the comics. Marvel Universe, the movie universe, they just say, hey, we're doing it this way, deal with it. And everyone does. It's really dumb. Um, I really hate it. <laughs> Civil War is the greatest storyline in the Marvel Universe I've ever read my entire life. Um, it's part of what got me back into comics for a while, because I'd picked up a few just to try to try things out, and, um, I had laughed at the title Avengers Disassembled, because I hated the old classic Avengers. I was like, oh, these guys are lame. You bow and arrow guy. Um, you've got Captain America. Um, you've, the Vision was always cool. I always liked Vision. Um, I always thought Thor was stupid, because I just didn't know enough. Uh, Hulk was dumb, because, uh, yeah, he's, because he, he was a big rage monster. He didn't actually like he wasn't like part of the team in the true sense of it um so just kind of weird and then like the avengers expanded they grew up they got too big and then i hated him for that and i was like 
yeah, okay, fine, you got bigger, but that doesn't mean, like, having a bigger piece of shit on your lawn isn't helpful. It, it's a matter of what is in it, see if it can fertilize your lawn. Um, that's the only time shit's a good thing, right? Um, so this was, this is just personally a huge event in the comic book world that, uh, I got on with, and I'm disappointed, uh, that the movie doesn't carry over that storyline. Uh, I'm always frustrated when, like, they have great storylines, they do these movies because these things are popular, um, enough to, to carry over from one medium to the next, and then they don't use what made the, the first one good. It's very strange. It's very strange to me indeed. Um, but, if we carry on, uh, I'll try to review my show notes. Uh, I ran out of a lot of time because we do do that late. Last night I had a lot of issues uh, getting started today. Um, plus I wanted to install new equipment. Um, I'm still kind of learning the booms or the uh, adjustable arms. I'll figure it out. Um, but this is really, I really wish they had ditched a lot of it and just done this as a Winter Soldier movie. Um, I will say up front, like I don't have a review ready, I don't have numbers ready or anything like that, but I will say this is definitely something to watch at least once. Um, this has some fantastic uh, action sequences in it, and as a standalone action movie, it's great. If you just pretend there isn't a Marvel Comics universe, it's really good. Um, if you, um, unfortunately the best parts of the movie are Spider-Man and Ant-Man. <laughs> Undoubtedly. Um, but the, the Winter Soldier storyline is the key storyline in all this. This isn't even a Civil War movie when, when it comes down to it. And that's the common joke is, when does the war start? Because we don't get a lot of that in this movie. Um, we get a lot of <coughs> Winter Soldier espionage. We get a lot of... Um, cranky infighting between people. We we have a whole storyline about Tony discovering uh, what happened to his parents, what they were involved with. <coughs> um, uh, and then throughout that, we kind of have all this stuff sprinkled on, and, and we're missing Thor and Hulk, two of the, the biggest, baddest motherfuckers um, on the team. Now, uh, supposedly, we were arguing about this, because I think they're just Thor's off-world and Hulk's missing. Um, but, in theory, they're, they're doing Thor Ragnarok at the same time as, uh, Captain America's Civil War is happening. Now, and, cause of course, like, if, Th now, people don't realize how powerful Thor is, but if Thor Hulk were around and chose a side, cause there's every chance they wouldn't even choose, um, Thor probably would side against Tony, cause he doesn't like Tony, um, and uh, Tony has turned to hunting his own kind, so Thor may take exception with that, or Thor may go diplomatic and be like, "This, this, these aren't problems for me. Uh, this has nothing to do with the protection of this world. I have to stay out of it." <clears throat> uh, and then Tony'd be like, "Good, you just make sure you do that." Um, and then Hulk would probably be like, "Honestly, if Hulk, I really think Hulk would just fight everybody. He'd be like, you guys think <laughs> that." fighting amongst yourselves is the right thing to do when we have bigger problems out there. Maybe I need to remind you of bigger problems. Which is actually very symbolic of what he actually does in the comics. Um, because this storyline, this in uh, Thor Ragnarok actually stole two big Hulk storylines. Uh, Planet Hulk and World War Hulk um, would have been massive. It would have been so good for the the businesses involved. It would have been good quality stories to do. Um, they really, really would have been good stuff. Um, towards the trash. Uh, <laughs> the man, I don't know what to say about this. Um, but yeah, Hulk fighting everyone would have been fun because uh, if Thor and Hulk actually come that close on a draw, um, it would have been interesting to see if everybody can can try to stop Hulk. Because it was really the Hulkbuster suit uh, last time, I think, that slowed him down enough. Because I don't even know if he actually knocked out. I think uh, Hulk ended up giving up. Um, maybe he just wasn't committed to the anger that day. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what was I going to say? Um, so it's actually going back to the, to the movie itself, we were sprinkled throughout the movie with a lot of... Um, Stuff that isn't centered around Winter Soldier. Um, but we start there, and we're seeing um, 
uh, we're seeing him in like old Russian science lab. We're seeing him uh, on some road, offing people, which we learn his Tony's parents. Um, we'll go to shortcut that right now. Um, but obviously he was used. Uh, he was not of his own mind. He didn't make any decisions to kill them. It wasn't for the greater good of Russia. It wasn't for uh, his boss. He was programmed. He was told to do it, um, and he did it. And <clears throat> there's every chance he could have played it off like he doesn't remember doing it. But I think he tried to be uh, good to Tony and say like I'm sorry, because um, he remembers uh, a lot of that shit, and he has to live with that guilt. Um, whole periods of his life where he wasn't in control of himself. It's, it's crazy pants, I tell you. Crazy pants. Um, I swear you're such a fat cat. Just jump up on the bed. <sighs> I gotta buy like a step stool or something for her. Maybe that's what I'll do with that box. I'll just turn it into a step stool for her. Uh, the cats will be upset, I'm sure. Um, ooh, people call me out. Um... So, I guess we're in Africa. It makes sense, given, like, the, the way everything's happening. And, uh... <laughs> uh... Okay. Um... So, Maximoff's drinking coffee, and then, like, it turns out they're all on, like, some covert ops thing. But they're all, like, right together other than Cap, which is kind of weird. And then Falcon's super conspicuous on the roof, but I guess given his equipment to make him a valid combatant, he has to be. I don't know. Um, it's actually a really cool scene coming up. Like, I don't know how his little Falcon Red Wing thing, like, determines anything. I don't know you can scan something... Oh, because he measured, <laughs> he measured the, the difference between what the shocks were at and what they should be and be like, oh, it's got maximum weight on it. And they, the bad guys actually drive the thing into the, uh, into the entryway, the, the embassy or the factory, whatever it is, whatever it is has armed guards. Now, there's no fucking way that once they did that, that anyone else was able to drive into the. Uh, into in behind the truck or around the truck, it knocked the the archway down. It was blocking everything. They would have had to go in there and move it. Um, just stupid plot hole. Um, you're supposed to be so amazed that you don't think like that. Um, I don't. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of neat action. That's the problem with a lot of this movie. Is like there's not much to talk about. But there's a lot of action. A lot of good action. It looks good. Um, it makes me wonder uh, what Scarlet's going to do. Uh, yeah, Scarlet Johansson. Um, not Scarlet Widow. Not Scarlet Witch, sorry. Um, going to do because she's getting too old. She said it herself. She's going to She's gonna be too old to play Widow properly soon. And so after the movie, I think that's going to be it for her. Um, but seeing that reminded me of that. Um, and the fact that she shouldn't fucking be there. She's a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, not an Avenger. Um, sorry, I'm always gonna go back to the comics, I always have that source where it's like, what are we doing? Why? Yeah, maybe she's helping out Captain, because he's technically S.H.I.E.L.D. too, but, it, I don't know, it's just not doing it for me. Um, but they steal some serum, uh, and Crossbones is there to just assist in the robbery, it seems. Like, he's in charge, but he doesn't seem to be there to get away with the robbery. He seems to be there to, like, settle a, a grudge match. Um, so, of course, he <laughs> has this rig on him, like it's from Elysium, uh, like he's Matt Damon or something, where he's uh, able to <laughs> get in a punching fight with uh, Captain America, which is impressive that you need, like, a suit of armor to, to box him. Um, and then he goes for the mistake of, like, uh, doing a one-punch kill, trying a one-punch kill, because he's got the blades on it, and so, like, he over-lunges and, of course, gets disarmed, quite literally, and... Uh, it's, it's a little ridiculous, um, but it turns out, like, they've actually encountered him before, and we, we don't have that movie, we don't have that story, there's no short or anything like that, um, uh, supposedly they dropped a building on him, um, so he's all fucked up, like, the, uh, Black Widow actually tries to electrocute him, he's like, I don't work like that no more, and he throws her in a tank with a grenade, 
or an armor up armored ve uh, transport vehicle, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Which was kind of a bullshit thing. She she should not have survived that. Um, and what were those two assholes doing in there in the first place? That's what they get for slacking off on the job. Um, so of course they go into punchy matches. Captors a shield. Um, they're hunting down people. So it all comes down to one last thing. Um, Crossbones starts fucking with Cap's head, talking about Bucky, and then he tries to pull a suicide vest uh, on him. And, of course, Captain would have been dead if it wasn't for Maximoff, but Maximoff doesn't have control of her powers yet. She doesn't have, she doesn't realize her true abilities. Uh, I want my Scarlet Witch movie. Hell, call it Wanda Maximoff. Like, don't even call it Scar Scarlet Witch if you don't have to. Um, either way, give me that movie. I want that. I want that. But she has to realize, like, more of her powers. Like, honestly, that's the best way to take out the original cast of all these characters and, and set up for the reboot. Is to literally have Scarlet Witch realize her powers, will Chris, uh, Quicksilver back to life, and then just kind of, like, will everyone out of existence for fucking with her. And then that's the universe that we start in and have that match the comic book universe because we keep going back to that well anyways. So you might as well do it right instead of ruining it. Like, this is literally the movie that breaks the Marvel Universe for me. Like, the crack started in Age of Ultron, which we're going to do next week. Um, the cracks start there, especially with not being able to call uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch mutants. kind of affects things a lot. Um... Or just enough, anyways. Uh, and then Ultron fucking dying, especially. Not that he's ever dead. Ultron can't die. It's just the way it is. Um, <laughs> but uh, maybe the next version will be a little bit more meaner or whatnot. But um, that's that's what I want out of, out of Scarlet Witch. I love. I actually really like Elizabeth Olsen. I think she's the. Uh, not only is she the hot Olsen twin, uh, but she's also the far superior actress. Um, uh, just her and old boy alone proves that. Mary-Kate and Ashley uh, ain't doing a whole lot uh, with anything. Uh, says they're billions of dollars. But, um... <laughs> they're doing alright. Uh, it just... Is what it is what it is. Um, so, but Maximoff should have been able to just eliminate the explosion or transfer it fully away safely or send it to space or send it to hell or just eat it I don't know but like she should have been able to handle that having Maximoff be the uh, linchpin I think that's the term for why everything went horribly horribly wrong is ridiculous um, I mean why wasn't Vision there like it, it'd be the same as having Vision fuck it up uh, having Cap, or ha in the comics, I'm going to keep doing this, in the comics, what it's um, new warriors that end up fucking everything up for everyone. Um, and they literally have a, uh, they, they do something very similar. They have a villain explode himself, but it's a villain that has exploding, explosion powers. It's not just some guy with a bomb on his vest. Um, and it's guys on a reality TV show with new heroes that aren't established as a veteran team go after uh, these veteran supervillains because they happen to get the information. So they take the TV crew and they go film everything live recorded to the studio and uh, fuck it up. Um, and things like that, are, which is a much more powerful statement, which makes a lot more sense, <coughs> are what set it up for um, uh, the Superhuman Registration Act, which is a better name than the Sokovia Accords. Which is bullshit because Wakanda happened to have one country, Wakanda, who, who <coughs> openly refuses to get involved in world affairs, for better or worse. Especially when they're sitting on vibranium mines. Fuck you, Wakanda. Um, that's what sets off the UN to, to start the Sokovia Accords. The Tony Accords, that's what I want to call them. Um, if you watched, uh, we watched um, How It Should Have Ended. At the end of it, it's actually some really good stuff in there. Um, but we go back, so we finally get out of that mess, and we're seeing like Tony. It's Tony speaking at MIT, uh, and he's he's shown he's demoing this new technology that he has for memory. 
reconstruction. Uh, of course, he has enough money to throw at it. To who cares? He has so much money that he's going to throw it at these other guys who are going to change the world. Uh, but he's all sad, and he's he his dick's sad because uh, Gwyneth Paltrow refused to be in the movie or or whatever. I don't know. Um, Pepper Potts and him broke up. Um, it just the biggest thing I got out of that was like I was trying to figure out what the opposite of pregnant was as a relationship. Um, and so as long as it's not dead in her, in his trunk, I'm, I was okay with it. Um, but sad, Tony's sad, and then the lady with the dead son was obviously sad, and she should have been, and that's fine. But it wasn't the Avengers' fault. Um, especially he died <coughs> in that stupid city that got lifted off the ground as soon as that building or that that city. Let me let me say that again. That's a plot that happens in Age of Ultron. An entire city is grab lifted off the planet. As soon as that happened, that whole city's gone. Everyone is dead. Anyone who survived that craziness was bonus points. Um, Ultron killed her son, not the Avengers. You're just mad because, like, you didn't. There's something in our brains that sets off when we don't get the revenge or justice ourselves. We get jealous about it, and it's. St- Stupid, ridiculous. It's unbelievable that someone would be that silly about it. She's so upset. And granted, she lost her son. But she's so upset she wants to go after anybody just to blood them. Um, now, in the comics, once again, there was a reason for this. It actually made a lot of sense, as stupid as it was. Um... It was an alien invasion. I'm going to go spoil that. Like, the whole thing was a plan to take over the planet. To get us in fighting with ourselves so that we would be too distracted to stop them. Um, so, it, tur- it would have turned out, because I think it was a different character, but it would have turned out that that lady would have been a scroll. Um, and fuck, if they do that, if they do um, Secret Invasion, I'm going to be mad because they changed... Civil War so far from the comics that not only is uh, Secret Invasion not possible at this point, everything else is broken. New Avengers is broken. Um, I wanted New Avengers. I wanted to see Spider-Man and Wolverine on the same screen as Avengers with Luke Cage, um, Spider-Man, Daredevil. Uh, I said Spider-Man. Um, Captain America and Tony, sure. Whatever. Fuck them. Um... They're not the, the the interesting bits. The Sentry? How cool would that be to do the Sentry? Man. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sentry is essentially uh, Superman, but with uh, schizophrenia. So he, he has times where like he can't join the fight because he's dealing with mental problems. Um, particularly an uh, uh, enemy called the Void that's literally in his own head. Um, that will come and attack the planet and he has to go fight him. It's very weird, but it's totally worth it. Um, okay, and the captain's trying to, like, uh, give Maximoff a pep talk, which she doesn't need because she didn't do anything fucking wrong. Um, she saved all those people on the ground. If only, um, now granted, it was still horrible, but if only the 12 Wakandans died, that's it. Uh, she probably saved 50 to 100 people on the ground, including the Avengers, um, who will go on to save more people. And she did as best she could. She could have done better, but no reason to blame her. Um, and it, it's really funny. It's like she's feeling so shitty, and she still monitors vision about using the door, even though the door is open. Um, like they're just trying to train him. Like he's he's some kind of lost puppy at this point. Like he's not housebroken. Um, and, and obviously Vision doesn't eat or poop, but, like, I guess walking through walls is the Vision equivalent of, of pooing on the carpet. <laughs> and you got to wonder, too, because, like, if he's having to learn manners like this, did he walk in on her while she was in the shower or something? Like, what happened? Like, what happened to cause these rules? Um, <laughs> uh, and, again, in the comics, if you don't know, uh, Vision is actually f- father of... Uh, uh, Maximoff's children. Um, I think it was, was it Mephisto? Um, 
she ended up borrowing uh, two souls from Mephisto or Mamelon Ding Dong, whatever his name was. Um, and then, like, while she was doing Vision, who, as far as I know, doesn't have anything down there, a Kindle treatment, uh, <laughs> uh, got pregnant with an android with no reproductive system. <laughs> so funny. Um, sorry, there's a show called The Good Place where, like, um, this AI created a robot boyfriend for herself and he had wind chimes for his ding dong. Um, imagine that. Enjoy that. <clears throat> so, the chief of state or of douchebaggery comes in and fucks and tries to guilt trip them all and fuck Tony because Tony's been dealing with mental problems and, uh, uh, all sorts of crap for a while now. Um, it, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous the type of stuff that Tony's been dealing with like a big whiny baby because he's just a human in a toy compared to these people um, so of course his storyline extends for that hell uh, Iron Man 3 may have just been a setup for this moment dealing with uh, the Sarkovia Accords and trying to back them um, in the comic books he gets much more directly guilted um, into it and um, then he gets some of his friends backing up and it becomes almost a peer pressure thing. Uh, plus he gets drunk in front of the UN and Tony's an alcoholic, uh, but he didn't have a drink. It just Scarlet Witch magicked him into being drunk. Um, so back to the winter soldier storyline where it gets good. Nemo attacks guy for a book. He's a, a Hydra agent of all things too. So of course he, uh, he gives that famous line of hell Hydra. And kills himself while he's being tortured. So he's just like, oh, I'm done being tortured. Thunk. Um, and then, of course, Peggy dies because that's the natural events. Uh, and so they go to her funeral and Captain Max on his gr on her granddaughter. Or her niece, I guess. I don't know. It's in my head, it's granddaughter. Maybe it's just because that's more gross. I don't know. Um... But, uh, so we go through a bunch of, like, uh, action stuff with, uh, Captain America and Bucky, like, fighting their way through the German SWAT teams, um, Bucky doing a surprisingly, uh, convenient job of not killing anybody, um, which is an interesting take. I honestly would have expected, um, him to just start killing people anyways, and then Captain America, but they're trying to, uh, or Captain America having to, like, fight him and the, the SWAT team. Uh, very similar to how, like, when T'Challa finally catch up to him, um, they're doing there. But I think they're trying to paint Bucky as more of a good guy in general instead of him having him be the anti-hero because he fucks people up in the comic. He's not a good guy until Captain, Captain's dead uh, and he takes the shield up himself. Because at one point he does, he, he I think he becomes Captain America himself. Um... Oh yeah, uh, Vision, really cute seeing Vision trying to cook for, for Maximoff and then, uh, telling her that <laughs> he can't let her leave, which is bullshit, because the only thing stopping her there is, like, her own guilt. Um, obviously Vision can't stop her, but he's probably the only one that can survive her trying to prevent them stopping her. So it makes sense a little bit. Um, let's jump through this a little bit. Um... So, like, when we're covering Bucky, uh, they, so, yeah, they clash with T'Challa, uh, the Black Panther, if you will. I was so pissed off about T'Challa just taking 50 cows to the chest, because I don't know why they're shooting 50 cows in a civilian area, but they had that big-ass fucking, um, machine gun on the helicopter, and you could see the butterfly, um, triggers, and you could see the grip. And you could see the size of the barrel, and they're just... Um, Chichala took those like it was 9mm rounds on, on a bulletproof vest. He didn't even flinch. He was just like, peanuts! Um, and it really it really irritated me. I should have pushed him back. Um, and someone pointed out that vibranium absorbs... such a horseshit rule. Abhor absorbs uh, vibrations, which is why it's vibranium. So, maybe. Um, which is why... Uh, Cap can get away with it, but Captain is super a super soldier, and so I actually had a bit, had that explained to me too because I don't know enough about Black Panther. Is that there is a spiritual magic backing 
um, T'Challa's royal family, um, so he is a super soldier as well, but he's not quite in the same realm as everything. But of course, during the not car chase, where uh, there are literally like three guys running through traffic at like 30 miles per hour, fucking badass scene. I love that scene. Um, and they did it so well because they really juggle it. And Captain stepping out of the car while it's in motion and then it tumbling after him. That was so good. So good. There were lots of really good action stuff in here. The the stunt choreography uh, guys really earned their paychecks on this movie. Um, but they get them and they get them in a detention cube. I th They explain later, like when Nemo's in there, like how the cubes work, which is why it has to be plugged up. Like it actually is designed to uh, electro zap them. But when Bucky goes ham and starts ripping the cube apart to get out to stop Nemo from saying the uh, <coughs> encryption words, it doesn't zap him at all. <laughs> um, <coughs> any of his arms vibranium. We've noticed that uh, Chichala is vulnerable later in the airport scene to electri electrical shocks from Black Widow, who... Really kept him there a long time now that I think about it. So it was like probably like 10 to 20 second bursts of just repeat fire. I should have hit that. That's all right. Um, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Yeah, the scene where Tony and Cap are talking it out is really supposed to be reminiscent of something from the comics. But they just it, they did a shit job. It was a bullshit scene. They shouldn't have kept it in there. It's all horseshit. It's just there to <coughs> make you uh, hate Tony just a little bit more. Done. I hate Tony uh, when the movie started. I didn't. I didn't need any encouragement. I'm not a Tony Stark fan. If you didn't know, uh, I'm definitely not a Pank Pym fan. If you want to do that, uh, he's a character that in the comics is a, a known alcoholic and wife beater. Um, so if we ever get the Wasp, in theory we will. Uh, it should be interesting to see which direction they, they choose to take that. Because it could be any direction at this point. Because they totally covered up a lot of that. Um, unless the Wasp was actually his daughter. And then that's a new direction. Um, it was really interesting to see Captain America wrestle a helicopter. Um, it's much more interesting to see that than uh, seeing like Tony, Scarlet Witch, and Peggy Jr. all going... Uh, trying like trying fruitlessly to fight the Winter Soldier in hand-to-hand -hand combat, because all Tony had was like one glove, I think, from his suit, because um, he wasn't supposed to be fighting that day. Wasn't even supposed to be here today. Um, I really want to see uh, enjoy it sexually if you like, but uh, I really want to see Chris uh, Evans. Is that his name? Captain America, do that scene where he's holding it together. I I look like such a wuss in comparison. Um, holding the helicopter and the rail together like this. I want to see him like I want to see someone edit it out so his shirt's off. Because um, I think like that would be something like when Chris Evan dies, you just put that picture on his tombstone. Hell, you could still do it with his shirt on, but because that dude's. It's like he didn't just get ripped. He bulked up. If you look at him back when he was Johnny Storm uh, to when he first became Captain America in uh, the first Avenger, which he wasn't the first Avenger, um, to now, it's incredible to see uh, how much he's bulked up over the years. Um, so Captain's interrogating Bucky. He's got his like arm clamped for whatever reason. Um... So, okay, yeah, so Tony tries to bang out May, but introduced to Spider-Man. Um, I thought it was really cute. Um, I like that they reset it. They went back to the basics. Um, they did Spider-Man as a kid, which is what he should have been. But at this point, Spider-Man should have existed for 10 years and he'd be 25. So, um, and, um... <sighs> Spider-Man was a very interesting, very important character in Civil War. So they really couldn't have done Civil War, I think, at all without Spider-Man, let alone correctly. And I still don't think they did it correctly, but they got a little bit closer um, with Spider-Man. Because Spider-Man in the comics starts on Captain's side, and then he has a moral dilemma, and he goes over to Tony's side, and Tony bribes him with a new suit. 
and then Tony and then Spider-Man tr uh, reveals his mask, which was huge. People went crazy about that. Um, and then he uh, eventually he has problems with how Tony's doing things, not just that they're bringing him in safely, but like Tony's employing villains, um, and so Spider-Man traitors. Um, and then the villains get to hunt Spider-Man down uh, and almost kill him in the process. And I think Tony in, ends up being the ones to stop them um, and let Spider-Man get away on accident. So Spider-Man runs away and joins Captain's team again. Uh, and now he's exposed. Uh, his loved ones are open for villains to find. And uh, Man, it's, it's rough. Um, but, the, I mean, this whole thing gets so bad that in the comics that even the villains start trying to join Captain's side. Be like, look, we don't like what's going on any more than you. We're willing to play nice and fair. Uh, until we can, at least until we can get like things back to how they they were like how like uh like because because this just isn't right <laughs> um of course punisher kills him but oh man okay so tony banging up may tony banging up may there's a lot of notes for that um oh apparently uh peggy jr is sharon I, some of these characters they do not give me a reason to remember their name like I they're important they remember that but they don't make me remember Sharon and they damn well should um, I think it's the fault of the movie oh my god uh, the airport fight all the sounds good um, the actions wonderful I love the quipping going on spider-man and man in particular again best parts of the movie spider-man uh, flipping around like webbing up everybody uh, which most of them shouldn't have been able to break those webs. Um, maybe Captain America. Maybe Tony's suit. But Tony was on Spider-Man's side, so it doesn't matter. Um, but Falcon should have been webbed up for an hour. Done. Um, Barnes, maybe. Bucky, uh, maybe he could have broke it. Um, but, like, you can't... You can barely cut that stuff. Um, once it... Because uh, it shoots out hot. And then once it solidifies... Uh, it, it takes about an hour to start breaking down. Um, like, there's a really, not famous scene, but there's a really iconic scene in um, <clears throat> New Avengers where uh, they're, they're interrogating Electro. Tony traps him in a bubble so he can't jump uh, into the electricity lines. And uh, it's like, oh, how, how do you used to deal with this guy? It's like, I just web up my hands and beat him. It's like, okay, do me up. And Luke Cage uh, has <laughs> Spider-Man do up his fists in webbing, um, and he goes, open the bubble, uh, and then Electro faints, <laughs> and he's like, oh man, he's like, okay, how do I get out of these, in about an hour, what, about an hour, they'll dissolve in about an hour, uh, and he literally, he just leaves Luke Cage in those, like, so when Tony was tied up with webbing in Peter's room, that wasn't changing, um, <laughs> now, of course, the solvent maybe would speed things up, but. Um, so back to the airport fight, we even got Giant Man, um, which was a thing, uh, and the very first watching of that really got my heart pounding, because it didn't happen at an airport, I think it happened at a construction site, if I remember right, but there, the first big battle um, between, uh, now there's some small scrimmages before this, but the first big battle between Tony's team and Captain's team um, in the comics happened uh, like at this construction site, and Goliath, who was famous for growing big, was on Captain's side. And then Tony had cloned Thor and then cyber, uh, cybernetically enhanced, or enhanced, uh, manipulated his brain so that they could control him. Uh, and it turns out the cyborg could, in fact, hold Mjolnir, uh, which was on Earth still. And during uh, Civil War, Thor was dealing with Ragnarok. Um, so... Thor, cyber or cyborg Thor actually ends up killing Goliath. Um, so it becomes a huge deal that Goliath dies. Like they actually bury him as like a five story tall man. Um, and that's what solidifies civil war. It's like after that point, there was no going back. It's like you committed to this, Tony, you committed to this. Um, so I thought Ant-Man was going to die. I thought they were going to kill Ant-Man. Um, like they killed, um, Thor, or, like, uh, killed Goliath, but, and given that the only weapon similar to how Thor killed him, uh, was Vision's, uh, 
head beam or whatever thing. They 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 did not do enough with Vision. They they he was so lame in this fucking movie. He was like, I can head laser that. I'll just float through you. Um, he literally could have floated or into people and stopped their hearts, put them to sleep. Uh, he could have ended that entire conflict on his own. Other than the Scarlet Witch, <clears throat> who's a lot more powerful than everyone th sees. Um, which is one one of the reasons why in Disassembled, Vision is the one that blows up the, the mansion uh, along with himself. Taking Vision out of the game ensures that uh, you don't have a one-sided battle. It's, it's why Hulk went off planet. It's why Thor's missing. It's why Vision's gone there. Um, Scarlet Witch is the one that actually kicks off Civil War, so, like, she can't be on a side. Um, there, there, again, it's just, there's a lot of things the movie's lacking, and it's things like this, so I'm just happy Ant-Man's not dead, because, frankly, the movie universe needs, uh, Scott Lang. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Scott Lang's dead at that point anyways. In the comics anyways. Um, yeah, by the time Goliath is killed, Scott Lang's dead. It's a shame. Uh, he, unless he, uh, in theory, he could have gone subatomic, um, but he didn't have the proper gear to come back, so he's lost. He's technically lost forever. Uh, that's the theory, anyways. Um, but airport fight, we have Rhodey going down, dead stick. I think was the term, which was another bullshit thing. Vision would have been able to calculate that if he missed, he would have hit Rhodey, um, and wouldn't have fired. He would have uh, flew after him, uh, or he would have uh, just had a very stern argument with Tony later, you know, or, or Rhodey later. If I had fired and he had moved, he would have been dead. But you didn't do anything? It's like, my options were limited. Uh, Vision is a sound board of logic. Um, they get that part of his character right, but... Fuck! Just have him be badass. He is... Um, so, and then, like, after all that happens, and, uh, Captain and them get away, and they capture some of the ones that are remaining, um, Tony starts investigating the Zemo like he should be doing in the first place. He visits the heroes in prison, like, there's a lot of banter going on. He gets the barest amount of information, he goes after Zemo and Cap and Bucky <clears throat> to try to stop the Winter Soldier stuff, um, and he goes rogue. He should be fucking arresting himself. I think he even makes a joke about that, about all the paperwork in involved in arresting himself. Ridiculous bullshit. I'm so upset <laughs> with this storyline. Um, but they get there, and Zemo's already taken him out, which is cool. Um, but it turns out Zemo's a big wuss and a coward, and I hate him. Um, and he's such a poor excuse for having this whole situation happen. It's just one guy that's petty and upset. That's why we're doing this? That's why we're seeing puppets fight each other? No! Have it be a worldwide motivation. At least with the scrolls invading, like, that made sense. It was a manipulation plot to weaken the planet to take it over. Okay, fine. With just the angle of uh, human sympathy and destruction, especially with all the mutant shit that had been going on, that made sense. Um... That, like, there's too much infighting and collateral damage happening. We've got to get a hold on this. Now, you would think, too... No, I take that back. Because, <coughs> um... I think it was it was a hundred-step plan uh, from the, the Illuminati workshop. Uh, Richard... Reed Richards, uh, Mr. Fantastic, Tony Stark, um, Doctor Strange, Professor Xavier when he was still alive, Namor... I think there's two more... I can't remember. Those are the major players. Um, I mean, and Doctor Strange stayed neutral uh, in a lot of this conflict for quite some time, um, which was like he had to make an argument in Thor Ragnarok about uh, letting Loki go to actually help Thor out, um, which was weird. Um, but like eventually Doctor Strange sees that Tony's lost his fucking mind and joins Rogers. Or at least gives them asylum. I can't. I don't know how helpful he actually was. Because Doctor Strange is another character that could fucking end this conflict if he had so chosen. Um, oh man. Um, so it's. I'm just so disappointed with some of this. Um, I forgot where I was going with some of it. Um, 
but that's okay. The, it's a really cool fight scene, especially in that wide shot where it's um, Tony essentially on the left side, the, the sinister side. Um, sinister is Latin for left. Um, it was commonly thought the left side was evil. So the movie's showing bias by putting Tony on the left and trying to work to the right side to do this battle. Um, and so there's this whole back and forth with Bucky and, and Tony on the left and Captain America fighting from the right and doing things. And it provoked like a kind of a weird conversation about like who actually is the better heroes. Like, yeah, Tony has uh, toys, but like Iron Man has the toys. Tony sucks out and out. Tony's a piece of shit. He's a, he's a smart asshole. That's all, all he's got for going for him. Steve Rogers, better guy than Tony hands down. Um, and Tony has to put on a suit just to even like, uh, be even with with uh, Captain America, let alone actually like beat him. Um, and then if Captain America rips out his little battery or cracks it, breaks his toy, then he's done. Um, I think people thought they were going to see one of them kill the other during this movie, and and I I never expected that. I never expected one of them to die. That actually would have been a big twist. Um, but dealing with, uh, things how they did, uh, and Captain throwing the shield down, we're set up for a Nomad movie, of all things. It's ridiculous. Um, I say, I've been saying that a lot, but it, it is ridiculous. It's like, where we're at in the series right now, um, or where we're at when this ended, <clears throat> is, is pretty fucking ridiculous. Um, I don't know what their plan is, especially, like, doing this shoddy version of Civil War now. Um, and then doing Infinity Crisis later? I don't know. I don't get it. Um, and then whatever part two is going to turn into after they introduce mutants from Fox. Um, and we get Spider-Man on board. Oh yeah, Spider-Man's always Sony. I keep thinking Spider-Man's Fox for whatever reason. Um, um, and we got a Venom movie coming up eventually. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen. Um, and we're just going to have to wait and see a little bit. But I, I can say with this movie, as good as it is, because it is good, like I said, standalone action movie, it's a great movie. Um, worked into the Marvel C or the cinematic universe, I have some problems. Uh, compared to the Marvel comic universe, I have a laundry list of problems, which I I will not repeat again or again here. Um, but I have been droning on for over 45 minutes now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Um, Next week we're going to do uh, Avengers Age of Ultron because I just realized it's available on Amazon Prime. Um, so we're going to do it. If I'd known that ahead of time I would have done this in reverse order. But um, I think it'll be fun to go back and see uh, the Puppet Master himself at work. Uh, oh man, my neck. Um, so until you see me next time, I am Camry. This has been... Hashtag we are movie club. Let me see anything else we're up to. Go ahead and click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.